I don't remember back when you were real young, but I remember a lot of things, and you'd take on a whole bunch of guys if they started any trouble. And you were as strong as a bull. I remember how you think you see Bill Monroe could pick that thing up while you pick up the side of a car while you put, change the tire. Is that right? Uh, we had a flat tire one time, and uh, and uh, Clyde Moody and me picked up one corner of it while they ch while they changed it. <laughs> I don't know how we'd done it, but we didn't have no jack, and we that's the way we lifted that tire. That's right, but you were a big, strong boy at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Carried the whole, you, how many did you have in your band? And... I had six in my band beside myself. There were yeah. seven of us, and one of them was a lady. That was Howdy Forster's wife. And, and uh, But I had uh, Clyde Moody, Curly Bradshaw, Chubby Wise. They all weighed uh, 600 and some pounds. <laughs> then I had String Beans and Cousin Wilbur. They weighed 300 pounds. <laughs> so it all totaled up to 960 pounds. And I carried them all at one time. <laughs> and Clyde hey. Moody will back me up, and he'll, if you ever see him, he'll tell you that's right, that's the truth. How did you do it? Get out on your hands and knees? Or? Well, I helped one this arm, one on this one. One set around my back, and the other set on his feet. One set around my... And you walked with him? Yeah, on my shoulders, like that. You can believe that, Staff? I know it's true, because I've heard it before. Yeah. <laughs> you carrying anybody around like that no, later? No, sir, I ain't carried nobody. <laughs> Here's Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys with Kentucky Waltz. What was the Grand Ole Opry like back in the old days? Has it changed a lot? It has really changed, you know. Yeah. It really has. I'll never forget the old days back here at the Grand Ole Opry. Uh, the people would work all week, you know, then they'd come to the Grand Ole Opry and work on uh, Saturday night. Uh -huh. There was a few people out on the road, but not, not too many. Uh, Acuff could go out and play, and, and after I was here three months, something like that, well, I hit the road too a lot. Yeah. And then Ernest Tubb would come in, you know, and he wasn't long till he could play the road. And, and I guess about the time I started on the Grand Ole Opry, the Delmore brothers had left, you know. Yeah. And they was well-liked throughout the country. Yeah. And Uncle Dave Macon, he traveled with me a lot, and, and D. Ford Bailey and Sam and Kirk McGee and Robert Lund, when I had the tent show, you know. Robert Lund was the talking blues. Yes, sir. And we had a wonderful show back in the day. How about Uncle Dave Macon? He was a wonderful showman. Yeah. Yes, he was. He was a funny old scutter, though, yes, too, he wasn't he? Was. Yes, sir. You got any stories you'd like to tell about him? Well, uh, one thing, if, if we played a place and had a powerful crowd, uh, he'd say, uh, the old man's still drawing them. <laughs> <laughs> but if we played a place and we didn't have many, he said, uh, Mr. Bill ain't doing so good tonight, is he? <laughs> <laughs>
We've been talking with Bill Monroe, the father of bluegrass, and don't you forget it. Join us again for Yesteryear in Nashville.